It is Sunday, October 11th, 2020, and this is an update on the Three Gorges Dam and current events in China. We have four pieces of information to cover today, including a look at the live stream and the water level at the dam. Also, courtesy of Fox News, State Department slams China for censoring Pence debate answer critical of Chinese Communist Party. Next, courtesy of NY Daily News, Singapore man gets prison time for spying for China in the United States. We also have some new tweets. Let's hop into it. And a brief caveat before today's video. While researching for these reports, I come across information from various sources. Just because I decide to include a piece of information doesn't necessarily mean that I agree with it. I like to let you decide for yourself. Moving on. And first, let's check in on the live stream at the dam. And the spillway angle camera is still up and running today. And now a quick look at the side angle camera. It's still down. And now let's have a look at the water level at the dam. The current water level is 172.21 meters. The current inflow is not noted. And the current outflow is 23,400 cubic meters per second. It is worth noting that these numbers are released by the CCP. And the water level at the dam has risen over the past 24 hours. It was 172.14 meters before peaking at 172.24 meters and falling to 172.21 meters. That's where it currently stands. And upstream at Kuntan, there's a bit of good news. The water level was 175.95 meters 24 hours ago and now it's 175.55 meters. And this comes courtesy of Fox News. State Department slams China for censoring Pence debate answer critical of Chinese Communist Party. China censors any sort of criticism of the ruling Communist Party and did just that during the vice presidential debate. State Department spokesperson Morgan Ortega said Saturday on Fox and Friends. Live coverage of Wednesday's debate was blocked in China when Vice President Mike Pence condemned the country's handling of the pandemic. TV screens suddenly were filled with color bars and the all caps message, no signal, please stand by. That's what the CCP does, Ortega told Fox and Friends co-host Pete Hegseth. They censor what their people see, and they're especially sensitive to any criticism of the party. I'm certainly not one of their favorite people at the moment. During the debate, viewers who weren't watching the censored version heard Pence slam Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden for being a cheerleader for communist China, while saying the Trump administration will hold China accountable for the pandemic. Ortega notes that Chinese citizens are banned from Twitter yet their government uses it regularly. We often get a chuckle whenever the Communist Party leaders, when my counterparts, you know, tweeted us, she said. We think it's, well, it's interesting. The American people can see your criticism. They can criticize me, Mike Pompeo, but they can't see their own government's tweets. Secretary of State Pompeo and Education Secretary Betsy DeVos sent a letter Friday to universities and K-12 districts across the nation, asking them to rethink any ties to the Confucius Institute, a program that brings Chinese language classes to America. The Trump administration has labeled the classes foreign missions and a malign influence from China. Dozens of U.S. universities host the Confucius Institute, through cost-sharing partnerships with an affiliate of China's Ministry of Education. Listen, you think your child is going to learn Mandarin Chinese language and culture at these Confucius Institutes, but these are essentially propaganda arms of the Chinese Communist Party, Ortega said. And this comes courtesy of New York Daily News. 
Singapore man gets prison time for spying for China in the United States. A Singapore man has been sentenced to prison for tricking unsuspecting Americans out of valuable but unclassified military and political information he would then pass along to the Chinese government. Jun Weio on Friday was handed 14 months behind bars in U.S. federal court for duping U.S. government employees into writing reports that he claimed would be sent to clients in Asia. Instead, they were transmitted to the Chinese government as part of what the Trump administration has called a broader effort by the nation to steal American secrets. In July, Yo pleaded guilty to acting as an agent of a foreign government. He was arrested in November after he was approached at an airport by an FBI agent who requested an interview. While Yo initially declined and set out toward his flight, he changed his mind and confessed to his scheme to dupe Americans out of information. While Mr. Yo was still free to leave the United States, he agreed to cooperate with authorities. Within hours, he was completely truthful with the government about what was going on, said Michelle Peterson, his federal defender. Prosecutors said Yo was a doctoral candidate at Singapore University when he was recruited by intelligence operatives following a 2015 trip to Beijing. Over the next several years, he developed a fake consulting company with the same name as a prominent U.S. consulting company and used a professional networking site to target and recruit Americans. Among his recruits was a civilian who worked for the Air Force and had a high-level security clearance who provided information about the implications of the Japanese purchasing a military aircraft from the U.S. He also convinced a State Department employee who prosecutors said had admitted to feeling dissatisfied at work and having financial problems to write a report on a cabinet member according to documents. It was not a one-off lapse in judgment that we're talking about here, said U.S. Attorney Eric Kernerson. The prosecutor said Yo worked for a hostile power on our soil to collect non-public information of interest for that power. The punishment was two months less than the 16 months prosecutors requested, citing the fact that Yo willingly cooperated with authorities. Thank you for watching this video. If you're finding it informative, please consider giving the channel a subscribe. And our last piece of information is a series of interesting tweets.
And I think that's a good place to wrap up today's video. I hope that you found it informative and check back soon for more content.